Make straight the paths of the Lord. It strikes me that it's not make straight the path, but the paths of the Lord. And indeed, our Lord Jesus will use any way he can get to kind of nestle his way into our hearts. There are many, many various beautiful charisms in the church. I think about the Franciscans who are attracted to loving the poor. Sisters and brothers who will give themselves to helping those in the streets. There are the Dominicans who love to preach and teach. And there are diocesan priests who love to sanctify through the sacraments. And so many different charisms, even though, you know, 10 years I was in parish working with families and uh, some who were really alive in their faith, I'd see, were attracted to passing on the message and pursuing God through really good stewardship. And they would come on the stewardship committee and they would want to teach their brothers and sisters the joy of tithing. And I had many hunters in my parish, people who really felt God in nature, and they loved to go out in the woods, so refreshing for them to do so each year. And that kind of spirit, maybe of John the Baptist in the wilderness, if you will. Uh, many, I, I met some women who were very devout, praying for the souls in purgatory. That was a, a tremendous, really a spiritual work of mercy they would do regularly. And then uh, many devoted to the Blessed Virgin Mary and so on. So many different charisms in the church. And Jesus didn't say in the gospel, prepare the way or the path of the Lord, but the paths of the Lord. So many different ways <laughs> that he indeed enters into our hearts and, and expresses love in the church. It also speaks about the mountain being laid low, the mountains and the valleys being raised up. Now, I don't know how you've imagined this in the past, but I've always just imagined, okay, here's the mountain and here's the valley, and you just lop off the top of the mountain, you put it in the valley. <laughs> and you got the, the gospel, right? Everything's smooth. Just walk right over. Well, in truth, the, the Greek of the mountains being laid low, the Greek word means humiliation. <laughs> the mountains will have humiliation or be humbled. And so we clearly see the sense of pride there, the mountains of pride. The valleys, the word is, will be filled, will be filled. Now, if we take this metaphor and think about it spiritually, you know, God wants to make our lives smooth. He wants to make our path doable, <laughs> more easy. The life of virtue, the burden is light, if you will. In order to do that, we must lose the mountains of our pride, not just take the pride and fill it in the valley. No, it needs to, it needs to go away. <laughs> That mountain needs to just shrink, okay? And what's the filling? Well, the filling is God. God's saying, there's something created in all of you, a kind of basin in your soul that is only meant for God's space. And so what can we do now to help the mountains be made low and the valleys to be filled in with God? Well, a daily examination of conscience is a good thing. And daily to say, Lord, forgive me for this, these sins of this day. Before you go to bed at night, even tonight, you say, Lord, I'm going to do a little daily exam of conscience. I'm going to examine my day. Repent for whatever sins. The mountain being made low. And to take time each day for some prayer. We call it mental prayer. Some time in solitude, you with God. How many of you, I'm just curious here, we can just raise hands, we're not going to look around and judge anybody, but how many of you take a little bit of time every day to pray something? Just hand halfway up. No, not the whole way. <laughs> All right, a lot of you. A lot of you are doing that. Wonderful. St. Juan Diego uh, is the saint we would celebrate today. If we weren't celebrating the Sunday of Sunday, his name would be mentioned in the prayers of the church, December 9th, his feast day. And Juan Diego, his original uh, Indian name from Mexico uh, means talking eagle. Talking eagle. 
Juan Diego. Uh, fascinating, I think there's a little bit of a prophetic message in what his ultimate vocation is because Juan Diego was met by the Blessed Virgin Mary in a very miraculous way uh, hundreds of years ago on the hill of Tepeyac near Mexico City. And Mary said, uh, tell the bishop I want a church built here in my honor. And he went to the bishop, and the bishop said, well, who are you? All right. Uh, he had a conversion at age 50 and became Christian, and this is after that. But uh, so he went back to the hill, and he was trying to avoid her. And she said, my son, my son, where are you going? Come back here. <laughs> and so finally he did, a simple peasant, really. And uh, she pro provided Castilian roses, miraculously appearing on this hill. Castilian is a, a place in Spain. And he picked up the roses and put them in his tilma, which is a garment, say, something like this chasuble. And he lifted them up and put them in his garment. It's called the tilma. And he went to the bishop. And when he got to the bishop, he unfolded and the roses fell out. And hence this beautiful, miraculous image of the Blessed Virgin Mary. It's on uh, a picture right outside this chapel on the left. And I invite all of you before you leave tonight to go and just observe that beautiful image of Our Lady of Guadalupe around this corner. So Juan Diego, his name originally, now Saint Juan Diego, originally, uh, I, I can't really pronounce it in the Indian language, but it was a, a talking eagle. And I think about that. Well, he, he ended up with a message he was supposed to speak to the bishop, build a shrine here, and his eyes saw something really spectacular, the Blessed Virgin Mary. So the talking eagle, uh, maybe the name was fulfilled in his Christian life. Well, to today, to today, God wants to fill us, the God part, and God wants to bring the mountains low and the valleys up. So today let's, uh, let's pledge to examine our conscience regularly and repent and to set aside a little time each day to pray.